There were some questions that came across. Somebody asked, how many ounces in the capacity of the tube? Each capsule holds 100 milliliters or 3.38 ounces. And someone asked, how long does it take from entering the food into the printer to when the food is printed on the plate? Houdini or does not have one print speed. It is optimized for the ingredient, the nozzle size, and the print design. Someone asked, pureed is pre-cooked in tube or placed in raw and pureed? Either way is up to you, and you can put it pre-cooked or you can put it in raw and then cook it after. So you have the flexibility of doing that. How long to complete print a plate of protein, vegetable, and vegetable? Again, the answer depends on um, your nozzle size, the print design, and if you have something complex. The film recipes procedures are provided to ensure that food in tube is the proper consistency to print. How long would it take? And again, nozzle size that way. If you have a certain recipe or something that you want us to show you, um, we can follow up with a personalized demo with your items that you're talking about and show you exactly how long they would take. Big question, what about food safety? And food, Foodini has been designed to be a kitchen appliances from the day they started. It's made with food grade, food safe materials. Foods can be cooked before printing or can print raw and cook them afterwards. The capsules themselves can be heated and warmed and they can be washed in the dishwasher. Recipes and procedures are provided to ensure that food in the tube is the pro proper consistency to print. Yes, depending on your texture and what your level is, whether it's puree, minced and moist, soft and bite size, whatever the level of the food test, based on that texture is what the templates are set up to be so that they're consistent time and time again. Once the template is in there, it's kind of like it's in your computer and then it's set in if you can think of like a computer program. Um, and then it's based on that computer program, that technology will, will kind of speak to the Fadini in a sense and print it out. And then it prints it out, it prints it out a certain amount of quantity per, per time period, and then you either cook it or it's cooked beforehand and then you can serve it. So the variation, again, just to let you know, there are a bunch of 3D printers, but this is the only one on the market that I have seen, this is a per that I have seen that works adapts itself for the different textures and adapts itself for different various, various foods, not just chocolate or dessert. It's that it adapts itself. And that's why a lot of the senior living in healthcare have been looking at it because they needed a tool. Remember, I've been in the industry 40 years. We've used scoops. Uh, we've used molds. So this is an opportunity to, again, simulate food that really looks. One of the questions that was asked, good question, how fragile are the items once printed? Amelia, how fragile are the items once they're printed to transfer it from the Fudini to a plate? The food itself food. is going to be as fragile as the ingredients are. However, in, in some cases, when you use Fudini, you are changing the proteins, essentially. So the uh, consistency may, may change. If we are talking about transfer, you can print directly on a plate, so you don't need to do any transfer. Or you can use a silicone mat or a baking paper and do the transfer. In some cases, what some customers do, and this depends very much on the processes they, they have in place, they print on whatever plate, they freeze that. Once it's freeze, it's very easy to, uh, to transfer to any other plate or, or any other fridge or, or whatever they have in place. So it depends very much on, on how they want to deal with the food and how they implement internally these, uh, these systems and these processes to get different capabilities in terms of uh, transferring the food and, and not being affected by its fragility. I think there is another um, question about the temperature just on top of that, which I will answer, which is related. So the, uh, the people, uh, the customers that are using Fudini as part of the process in the kitchens, they, they have a requirement to print over a temperature that doesn't allow bacteria to grow. So you can do that with the, with the printer. You can print above the temperature in which bacteria are killed or cannot grow the uh, further where they are. So this is something that allows you to keep the temperature of the food while you are printing because it's a relatively fast process. So you get the, uh, the, the final dish at the temperature you want. 
how do you control food temperatures at bedside? Because what they're saying it looks thin. Will it sustain in a dome? Or if somebody put it on a plate and a dome covering, will it sustain the temperature until it gets to the patient? Will it keep hot enough? Food. Yeah, so, so normally what happens is that if this food is just printed and served, normally the hospitals have a sort of trolleys where they put the plates and those trolleys have a system that keeps the temperature constant. So when they go from the kitchen to the uh, patient room, they stay at the same temperature all, all the time. So that's two different things. One is while you print, the other one is once you print it, I'm going to bring that to the patient. One of the things is if you put in the raw ingredients, just like you, and then you print it and then you bake it or cook it as you would, and then you put it on a dome, on a plate and a dome and a cover, it's going to sustain the temperature just like as if you were cooking food to a puree. Of course, sometimes when you scoop them, that you have a denser. But if you do it the same way and put it on a preheated plate, and put a dome on it, you're still going to be able to sustain because, again, that texture of it is going to sustain the temperature and it's going to be closer to the heated plate. So you will get holding temperatures of that. On top yeah. of that, because the, the capsules are heated individually, you can keep the food warm before printing and while printing. So that means that even though the, uh, the, the ingredient may not have been uh, warm when you started the process, at the end of the process, is warm. The question was, where is the machine made and are any hospitals and nursing homes have used this machine? The University of Utah uses the machine and then Amelia can tell you where the machine is made. Yeah, um, so the... Uh, the, the, the Army is looking at it also. Mimi, you had asked, the Army is looking at it. Um, you have different components of it that are looking at it, but Amelia can answer. Yeah, so we, we can disclose this one, a University of Utah hospital, because they, they made it public. So uh, that's that's something you can you can uh, uh, Google and you would find it. We, we are an American company. We have subsidiaries in, in Europe and, and in, uh, in Asia as well. And uh, we have an industrial partner, which is from Taiwan. All the, uh, the, the design and, and uh, the manufacturing of the uh, device is made according to the U.S. and, and Europe standards in terms of safety and, and certifications. So you have, you're certified, you have equipment certification for safety for this, for Tordini at this point, correct? Yeah, correct. Someone asked, are there recipes for all the IDDSI standardized diet? And that's the dysphagia standardization initiation that's a global initiative. Are there recipes for those standardized diets? Do you have textured recipes in, that are templates in that diet? We, we work with a number of partners that uh, feed the system with the recipes, right? So it's, it's not us who decide the recipes and, and the diets. Putting this information inside the device is, is really easy, but it's up to the user to use those ones or whatever they want. I see an answer about NSF certification related to the previous one. What we have is the certifications that are related to uh, food safety and seven other different things like electromagnetic compatibility, safety, and, and some other things. NSF is, is not a mandatory certification. What we work is to be compliant with what the requirements of, of the regulation are. I think the NSF certified is for certain types of machines and carts and things like that, stainless steel, and so not under, all comes under that qualification, but there are equivalents for those kind of machines that are more printer, food printer, or processor, or those kinds, I think. You, yeah, you know exactly. I mean? So we, we follow the FDA uh, certifications. The question was asked, if the pureed food is 150 degrees and it is printed, the food depth of the carrots, carrots is not dip, thick. Temperatures drop quickly without much depth. The pureed food shouldn't be 150. If you're putting in food in there, it'll be higher. I think what he was saying is they're heated. And so the idea is your food, if you're baking or you're putting in higher and you have a heated plate and a dome, if you ever take carrots, the temperature would sustain itself. Take sliced carrots or pureed carrots from a pot or from a steam table and put it onto a plate and take your temperatures. It'd be a very similar temperature and holding of, of sliced carrots of those kinds. 
-hmm. Yeah, normally we have done this testing and, and we have been uh, like working with, uh, with real environment and real kitchens and care centers and, and hospitals. This has not been a problem so far. So you can uh, heat um, a bit slightly this temperature if, if you need and then print fast enough not to get a drop or too, too big of a drop in the temperature. Another question, can you use any plate inside the printer? Yeah, so one of the things that this specific device has, Houdini has, is artificial vision inside. So we can recognize a plate, we can scan it, and we can print on top of it as long as it's not uh, too steep in, in the, in, on the sides. We, we couldn't be printing on a bowl that has very steep uh, walls, but can print on, on plates that are not perfectly flat. One of the things someone had asked me before this was about like comfort foods, like spaghetti and meatballs, a burger. And again, those kind of foods, it's very hard for somebody, everyone likes burger, at least whether, whether it's beef, vegetarian, everyone is a comfort food. And so you can actually have the ability to do a burger and to do bread. You know, it, obviously it's not going to be, it's through the machine. And so therefore it's going to be, be able to be consumed with a fork or a spoon however, but it gives that illusion of it. So when I look at the spaghetti and meatballs, the same principle. So bread, people have asked about, they've asked about meat. So again, when you see something like this, it, you know, it'll show you the capacity of what you can do. It's only limited by what you're thinking of what you're doing in your own facilities. Those recipes will be adopted. So I think it's a good thing when you look at technology. Someone asked, does the a nine-inch plate fit into it? Yes, it's 9-inch, and it runs on both 110 and 220. But some questions that I know I got some questions ahead of time from some is that there are a whole bunch of videos on it just to see how it works. But again, if you have wanted to personalize on your product or you wanted to share a recipe and see how it can be made, that can be made too. The idea of today was just to show you the possibilities. When you look at what you have out there, how can you stimulate those senses? How can you create a better engagement? And how can you get people to eat more and not have to just add supplement after supplement? You can just use supplements, but how do you get them to eat more? A lot of cancer patients, orange is a really good thing for them to, the orange flavoring and scent. You can infuse that into food, and so it allows them to eat it and not gas as easily. Parkinson, you know, the different textures of it, what would be great. The other thing is, and I was thinking outside the box, is a lot of you do meals on wheels and things like that. And some of you have uh, CCR communities where one partner is having a dysphagia or, or a swallowing or difficulty and, and the other partner isn't. They'd be able to eat together, both a hamburger. One would be a hamburger like traditionally and one would be like this. So there's another point of dignity of doing this. Um, again, a lot of you will say to me, well, if I'm only using it for a certain amount, what else can the machine do? And like we said, it can do desserts, it can do appetizers, it can do other things that are not textured like that, but are more crunchy and have more of the texture that you traditionally would have. You always want machines or whatever you're printing or any kind of technology to be, to have multi-purposes, especially when you're bringing things in today. But again, when you think about, could you bring me up the picture of the spaghetti and meatballs, Amelia? There was a request. Did you bring back yeah. the spaghetti? The idea is when I look at this, you have meals on wheels, and I was going to say then there's a the meals on wheels component, but a lot of times those patients that are getting meals on wheels, you can't always give them a texture diet. Well, now you have the capabilities to do that um, and offer another option. Kind of thinking outside the box in that sense. Is there a printed design from mass quantity or one, two per given period? How does it work? How many can you do? As a rule of thumb, what we have tested is like with one device, you could take care of 10 people minimum. So that, that means that if you want to serve many, many, many people at the same time, you may need more than one device. But it depends very much on how things work in, in internal processes, because in, in some cases, food is created when the staff is, is not like attending uh, the people at nighttime. And in this case, they, yeah, the productivity is different. You can, you can do food for many more people. But if you want to do real time 
food creation, so to just put the ingredients, create the plate, serve the plate to the uh, patient real time. So in half an hour, you have to do all the process. Then uh, you would need approximately one device for 10, 15 people. But you could prep stuff ahead of time, hold yes. it. And in this case, the productivity is, is much larger, of course, because you can you have much more time to produce the food. So with a single device, we have customers that what, with one or two devices are producing a couple of hundred of dishes per day. That's depending very much on, on the internal process. Just thinking about food printing, what would you like to eat and what would you envision? But I hope we've given you an overall feel of what food printing can do that there is such a thing as 3D food printing. 3D printing doesn't only do equipment, and it, but there is food, and food comes out tasty and textured and the smell so that it's not artificial, it's fresh ingredients. Again, think about those ugly fruits and vegetables that you tend to, well, now we, we're a lot more, we're better at what we do, but a lot of people weren't able to utilize them in fresh fruit area where you serve a whole fruit or slice. Here you're able to use that. So that's how I think, how can we use them? And I know that if I was serving my mother-in-law had Alzheimer's, a food like that, it would be a lot much more eye-appealing and bring her back than serving her a scoop of something. As populations age, what their expectations are going to be higher. As unfortunately as certain illnesses happen, people want a dignity. And again, if we can do that, that'd be, that would be great. Some hotels are actually even incorporating things like this because they have families going on family outings and they have an elderly person that has a swallowing or something difficulty, and now they're able to offer an option. They use it for catering, but if you have a special need like an allergen or this is a, another adaption of offering personalization. Any more questions? Let me see. Okay. Okay, I think I got them all. Well, thank you for joining us today. I know with everyone global pandemic, it's really hard. Hopefully we've given you time to breathe and kind of see something different and new. And thank you for joining us. And thank you for taking time out of your day and learning more about food, free, food 3D printing, 3D food printing, and Foodini, and what amazing things they're doing and what they're doing and bringing it to the United States. Thank you for joining us. And be safe and be healthy out there. And can't wait till we get back to a new reality of lots of things. Thank you, everybody. Have a great one. Thank you, everybody.